Welcome back to the uh, build series. Thanks for dialing in again. I feel like I'm making a bit of progress, which is um, which is good. I uh, so I've got all, as you saw in the last episode. Hopefully, if you haven't seen it, go back and check it out. I did all the plumbing under the floor, put all the tanks in, all the wastewater lines, and all the delivery lines for the um, for the plumbing. So that's all done. All the wiring's done. Now I just got to get the floor glued down. Got to drill some penetrations in that floor, which. Has kept me awake at night for a few nights now thinking about getting that wrong because that flooring's expensive and i can't afford to make a mistake so measure 400 times and then cut once hopefully is the equation uh yes yeah, so i get the floor glued down i've still got the spare wheel mounts at the rear to finish off and you got those half done in the last episode so i'll get those done hopefully this series this episode as well uh, floor glued down and then it's upstairs and I haven't really put a huge amount of thought into the next move to be honest once the floor is glued down and set and ready to build on um, uh, I've got to get into that upstairs set out I've got the panels that I'm going to make the internal walls out of and um, I've got most of the drawings done that I'm going to send off to my mate with the CNC machine so you might that might feature in this episode as well uh, taking that down there and getting a bit of that cut up which would be good um, and then yeah putting that all together and gluing it all together on upstairs but that's the dream for today not sure I'm gonna actually get to that but we'll see how we go we better jump into it because I've already burnt through a number of hours this morning fixing stuff that I hadn't done quite right and also trying to do this intro I reckon I have to take 45 now so let's roll on with it Cheers. Here goes nothing, time to drill some holes. <clears throat> That's uh, the chassis marked on the diagram, so that's where steel is beneath the floor. This whole sheet moves back over there. We've got waste, purple line comes through there. I've got a breather, I've got to tuck in between the two of them and then that's the filler point for the front tank. There's a breather line and a fill point for the rear tank. Uh, over there I've got two marks for waste to the, from the sink to the grey water tank and then there's a hole going there for uh, for the chassis wiring that comes through the lights and stuff that I showed you in the last episode and there's a hole there that picks up that shark bite for the fresh water into the kitchen area and over here I've got the that's moved a bit since I did the original measurements a few weeks ago but that's the waste point for the shower as well. So I'm gonna jump in and hopefully they're all okay. It's impossible to tell until it's actually cut and then put back in place, unfortunately. So hopefully I got it right. The, re the only real critical one is this, if I'm honest, because that's got rigid, it drops into a rigid structure of the PVC. The rest of them are all pretty flexible. I can move them 10 mil either way to get them to work. So. Yeah, hopefully that one's right. See how we go. Pretty happy with that. Dropped them in. Seems to fit reasonably well. 
that landed spot on, which is good. This one's a little bit over, but it's got flex in it. So it'll make it. That one's right, that one's right. That one will move, that one's right. Reasonable success. Wish I'd pushed that across a bit. Looks like I started to drill the hole in the right spot and then I came back. I don't know what happened there, but it'll do, it'll work, I'm pretty sure, with a fair bit of sicker flex around it later on. Oh, it's a bit of work in getting all those pipes up and fitted off and heat shrinked and uh, ready to roll. So just got the floor propped up, as you can see. I'm gonna drop that down over the pipes, make sure it all fits snugly and um, then bring the other floor sheet in. There's a couple of penetrations in it as well at the back and drop that on and make sure everything fits neat and looks good and then just uh, level the floor up, get a straight edge on it, make sure of where I've got to put, figure out where I've got to put packers to get it all level. Um, and then um, pick it all back up again, slightly off the deck and chuck some glue in underneath. Before I drop it too, I'm gonna to clean all the top of the metal with um, this uh, gear I've got from Terrison, the same supplier as the glue. I'll show you that when I'm doing it, but it's uh, just the treatment for the surface, get all the muck off the head of glue going on. So I'll do that now while the floor's out of the way, or most of it, and then maybe touch it up before I glue it. Getting there. This is the gear I'm uh, cleaning the top of the surface with, so anywhere where there's gonna be glue, adhesion, give it a wipe down with this. Uh, it's the same supplier, uh, maker is the manufacturer is the glue, so Terrison, this is called VR10. Um, bonding and sealing pre-treatment product. So yeah, I'll just do every surface with that now and make sure I'll drop the floor down and it makes it difficult to get to later on. a bit to get that down but it, she's on looks pretty good penetrations are all fairly neat the purple's probably holes are probably a little bit too big but that's all good that was too small but it got over and the airlines were a bit small um, one of them I drilled on an angle purposefully to because of the way it was coming up from underneath uh, it was better to come in at a slight angle and it just made it really tight but it got through, uh, I ended up using that little saw just to cut a bit out of the back of it so it wouldn't rub as much. And um, yeah, I don't really know. There's probably a more professional way of doing these penetrations with glands and things, but I'm just gonna fill that with the same glue that I used to put the floor down later on just to stop dust getting in and whatever else. So yeah, I just gonna bring the back sheet in, cut a couple of penetrations for it there and, and over here. Chuck it on and then I'll just level the floor up with a straight edge and make sure it's all flat. Pop up some corners if I need to and then ready to glue. This is the caulking gun that I bought, <clears throat> cheap and cheerful on eBay, I think it's about 90 bucks. It runs off the air compressor fitting on the bottom there. Um, and you just put in the sausages, those things. And I've got Terrison MS939 glue. Um, it's meant to be the bee's knees for this application, so hopefully that's good. Uh, I'm just praying this air gun <laughs> works and I don't have 
sun everywhere because I don't have any other applicator to put, use to, for these. Just got that propped up for um, temporarily so I can get in under there for the glue. It's not the ideal scenario. I understand that. It's uh, with all these penetrations and so on, it's just too hard. So I'm just going to have to <clears throat> start in the middle and work to the outside edges and probably make a huge mess. So I'll do the center board first, the rear board next, and then get the front board on and then clamp the whole thing down. Hopefully I've got enough time in between curing and application and curing to get it all done. effort it was quite difficult getting in under that floor the way I had it set up probably not the ideal way to do it in hindsight I did manage to get a decent bead of glue on every single surface which was good uh, if I had my time over we'd probably do this all in a different arrangement but ends the break sometimes so I put pressure on that spot and that spot mainly where the joins are so the joins in the boards meet there um, to try and pull those joins down and um, when I put the straight edge on before, the, the either end was a little bit lower than the middle because of that, that bulge in the middle. So I uh, put heaps of cork on the ends and a couple of small packers and, um, and hopefully that's going to rectify it. Still plenty of, plenty of glue between the floor and the, and the frame at those points. So I think we're good. I think, we, think it's going to work out all right. Um, but yeah, I'm going to try and keep away from that now. I don't want to touch it and move it, do anything with it. So I think I'll get on to now cleaning up the shed because it's an absolute disaster zone. Uh, sweep all the floors and pack everything up. And also this afternoon, finish the spare wheel mounts because uh, I've got some stuff that's turned up for those to get them done. I'll get on with it. So I bought a couple of discs, three mil thick steel, um, laser cut obviously just to make this look a bit neater so they go um, with the same the, the right diameter for the center of the wheel I've just got one held in place there by the magnets so it's dead center and I've just gone around and marked with a texture uh, each of the stud holes so that I can uh, drill and put some bolts through so that's roughly the arrangement I've just got to weld that off, but what I'll do is get the penetrations, the bolts through first and uh, get them attached to the wheel with the plate on the back and then when I sit this into position I can just do a tack weld on it to hold it in its final resting place and take the wheel off and then finish the weld. I think that should be good.
There's one on. It's turned out pretty well. They're vertical and it fits neatly. Just touches the bottom there, which is what I wanted it to do. I didn't want it to have all its weight on it. Uh, now I've just got to figure out how I'm going to put a bracket in there to strengthen that because I haven't got much room. No, there's probably enough there to put in a decent, decent bracket. So I'll get on with that. Probably won't film the next one. Just assume it got done. That's them done. Just put in some uh, bracing there on both of them and a piece on the back, which I just thought it'd help that rear weld because it's going to carry all the weight. And when I'm on the Gib River and it's shaking to shit, hopefully that'll give it a bit of strength. Uh, so they're done. I'll just wait for painting when I've got some more Raptor open and ready to roll. Uh, just continuing to do some filler jobs today, so I'm going to make a temporary number plate mount. Uh, this is a bit of a section that I cut out of the mud guards actually, at the rear. Um, it's coming in useful. It actually fits perfectly. It tucks in under the wheel there and pulls up tight. So that's where the light will go and I'll mount the number plate across here like that. Makes it legal. Uh, and then it's just a couple of bolts that I need to weld off to the back of this that go through. There's a wheel nut on this side at the full length of the thread, just um, pulled into the uh, hole there on the tire, on the wheel. And then at the back, I just pick it up with a couple of couple of nuts that I'll tighten up and it should be good and then the uh, the light lead comes through the back here and I'll just have a quick connect plug that goes through the wheel and down to the down to the here and that can then be flexible and move around uh, this wheel mounts portable and it can move over to the center if I'm only carrying one tire or whatever I think it should work hopefully Cruising through the odd jobs, knocking them off because they're going to have to get done and I'm at a bit of a hiatus right now before I kick off in the internal. So I thought I'd knock all these off. Um, number plate's done, obviously. So this is the next one I'm going to have. I found these taps at Bunnings. They're a unit with a uh, complete end already. So the adapters are actually built in to the, to the fitting, which I like. So I don't have to screw on another thing at the back there. It makes the whole thing a bit smaller, lower profile. And... Uh, less and more discreet so again I'm going to use a piece of the old mud guard and uh, this will mount in under the back of the back wheel up underneath the floor and I'm going to put two of these in I'll just drill the holes for those to fit through um, low enough that I can still access the tap underneath the wall of the van and um, one will be click on for bottom fill pressure filled tanks and the other one will be click on for uh, access point for the tank so I can uh, put a shower that'll be fitted off to the pumps that'll run through the kitchen round to the shower and then the, that line will continue onto this tap uh, on the other side so yeah I'll have an access point for water outside if you to clean down wet seats flush for outboard motors have a cold shower I'm not going to put hot water to it just cold for now and uh, yeah hopefully it looks neat and works well Okay, I knocked over all those odd jobs. It's time to get on with uh, building some internals. You might be able to see over my shoulder there. Something very exciting has happened in the last uh, 24 hours. I managed to get all the panels cut on my mate's CNC machine. A uh, few little bits and pieces to finish there, but pretty much got a full kit here. Um, I'll actually throw you to the, to the CNC machine so you can see what I'm talking about um, with a bit of footage there. Yeah, so that all went pretty well. Uh, now it's time to stand the jigsaw puzzle up and uh, get it all get it all constructed. So I'm just going to stand most of the panels up in place, uh, clamp them off, and just make sure all the dimensions are right and it's all going to be set out properly. And then I think the next thing will be to do the uh, shower base and the plumbing that goes with that. Um, so I'll get the full ensuite sort of arrangement done, and then we'll go from there. Not sure how much more we'll get through in this episode, but um, 
We'll jump in and see what happens. So that's the shower base in place. Uh, it's, it's a solid plastics SMC, I think it's called sheet mounted, sheet molded compound, I think is what it stands for. Um, yeah, it's got a textured surface on it, non-slip. It's about 20 mil thick, weighs about 10 kilos. It's a pretty solid unit. Uh, it's meant for domestic purposes, but uh, I thought it'd work well. It's exactly the right size. Um, it's, got, it's got fall from this point through which is perfect because the composting toilet's gonna to sit there uh, on that flat surface, so that works out really well. Uh, so I designed the whole ensuite around this, obviously, and that's where it ends up. Um, the waste hole ends up with, in relation to the, the waste line that I've got underneath the van. Obviously the chassis, as I showed you in earlier episodes, uh, comes through there, and uh, therefore I had to put that hole off center, but what I'm gonna do is just put this uh, waste floor drain I'm gonna, obviously it's got to connect off to there. This whole shower base is gonna come up to two thicknesses of this, which is 36, 38 mil, depending on what I put under. Uh, so these are just off cuts. I'm just gonna router a circle out of the first piece and glue that in there, glue that in there with a bit of pipe um, up off the, off the floor. And then I'll get another section, which will go around that I'll just cut out what's essentially gonna be the shower tray, probably about the same size as that square uh, out of the center of that. Again, glue that down on that piece. When that's in place, then water should just drop down into that piece I router out and straight through to the waste, create a little sink there, which is the plan anyway. Hopefully it all works out okay. Um, it's gonna take a bit of thought and positioning uh, to get it all right. So I'll just crack onto that and see how it all works out. So I've just cut that centre hole out um, using the waste hole as a template. So that obviously goes in there, but I've just got to now drop it down and rebate this out and drop it down inside so it's flush. shower base sitting up in the air I'm just uh, I've got all these offcuts and I've just cut little squares with them and marked the points where the bottom of the shower base has got a, a bit of meat uh, a bit of a I guess a bit of a strong point mounting point roughly I didn't use all the spots only most of them where I'm going to get the most traffic toilet goes there and obviously stand here in the shower uh, it'll also be glued all the way along the edge on every edge to the outside wall or to one of the walls inside so it'll have a perimeter uh, adhesion as well so yeah I'll just glue all these down with sicker one to the floor and one to the top of the other one uh, and let it cure overnight this uh, is how it roughly worked out probably wondering why I used black 
instead of white. That's because I bought thought I bought white until I started squirting it out of the tube and realised it was black. Anyway, you might see it. Matches the shower base, all good. And uh, that's just the rough arrangement that I've gone with. That fits perfectly around that lip, sits inside that lip. So uh, the water should drop through and run into there and uh, it should work okay, I think. And then it'll be a good support for around the waist area as well. Um, but yeah, that's that's it for the for the episode we've run out of time unfortunately so uh hopefully you join me for the next one where we're standing up all of the panels and gluing them together and i've got to build a frame under the bed area out of steel and uh glue some panels to that as well and and then we're you know I've, i'm just at the point where i'm quoting and about to order the out, outside panels which is a four week turnaround so need to get those in a hurry because uh, yeah, I'll be pushing up against that pretty soon, I reckon, for the outside walls. Uh, yeah, but hope you enjoyed that. Make sure you like and subscribe and chuck any comments down below about anything you uh, think I can improve on. I'm sure there's plenty. Anyway, cheerio.